Hi guys, welcome back again to the video. Today, you join me, Morgan and Chris, down at West Wales on the lures for the Pollock and Rass. Something a bit different. I was thinking of coming down and trying for a tote, but trying have a day walking around, different rock marks, bit of rock hopping, trying to find a few, uh, few Pollock and Rass, hopefully. I've been fishing for about probably about a half hour, if that, and I've had I've had two little Pollock, or three little Pollock, Chris has had one, his first ever Pollock as well, which is pretty cool. So basically at the minute I've just started off with simple lure rod, it's a 10 to 40 gram rod, 25 pound or 30 pound braid, 25 pound fluorocarbon leader, then I'm basically just fishing at the minute with just little jigs, little slow jigs there, little HTO slow jigs, I can't remember the name of the lure, but what I'll do in the description below, I'll put on, I'll put a link to what lures I use through the day and what I find only works hard on you. So I'll go join them back now. I'll get there because I'm filming my GoPro today, I'll get it on my head and hopefully get some action on the go for you guys. So at that, I'll cut this little video out now and hopefully get back with some fish. Right, so like I said, simple lure setup. Lot of slow jigs, like the assist hook. Who's a silver to start, so I've had my fish on so far. Just go and join the boys down. Hopefully get a few fish. Yeah, the boys have just spotted the seal, which isn't the best. Just getting the fish off. I tend to let it sink on a tight line, so if there's any undertow, it don't take too much line out. By the time you hit the bottom and you tighten up, you could lose your lure. So I'll keep it tight so you can feel it hit the bottom straight away. Like so. And basically I just slow, slowly jig it. I tend to watch the rod tip because you'll feel them hit it as it's sinking down. Fish on over there. Oh, oh, I'd hit then. Just hooked up a pollock then on the jig. We've had quite a few now. We've probably had about 15, 20 fish out so far. There's nothing of any size. I think this is my biggest one of the morning so far. We'll probably give it a bit longer here and move off and try and find some better sized fish. Yeah, just small pollock. Yeah, it's the biggest one I've had so far anyway. Lovely powerful fish, has a jig in his mouth, only just stuck. Oh, whoops. He's gone. But yeah, like I said, we'll give it a bit longer here. Yeah? And probably head over to try and find, because there's not much tide here, so that doesn't really help. Because the pollock, the bigger ones, do tend to hang out where there's a bit more tide. Normally, if you can find tide and slightly rough ground, you find the pollock. So, it's probably another 20 minutes or so here and have a change of venue. I should just finish up on the first part. That's the biggest one so far, I just had. No monster, not a bad start for the day though. Got about a pound and a half. I don't know if you've well, it's coming out as gills. The lure has absolutely engulfed it. Pretty typical of Pollock, they got big mouth. Oh, the lure's actually come out now. Huh? Lure's gills. Right, well, let's get this unhooked. Well, it, it's unhooked itself, but I had to put it through the gills. I'm going to get the gear together, climb back up to the top and go and find another little, little ledge to have a little flick off. Try for the, have a bit more of a go for the rass on the next mark, so right, I'll see you there. Well, we just come to the uh, second mark, if I show you actually. It's basically a big 
flat ledge there's more good which is basically just covering all this ground with the lures and you got a little bit of it on there on the right hand side a little gully and i've just tried with the lures second cast and i've had a nice cooper rass the second one i've had on lures as well little female hold it up now buzzing with that didn't expect to get one of those this time of year on the jig Surprising what you'll catch on, you tend to get more species on the slow jigs than you will on sort of soft plastics. They're amazing colours on them though. And that's just a female. It'd be amazing to get a male as well. So we'll get this thing unhooked. I don't like to keep these out of the water for too long. A little beak on it. Right, so we'll get this thing unhooked now. And send them on his way and keep on fishing. I'm going to have another few casts with the lures now. And then I'll probably set up a brass rod with the worm baits on the bottom, fingers crossed, we get a few balance. But like I said, let's get this guy back, or her, I should say, it's a female. Amazing colours on the edge of the fins there, or the blues. Right, let's get her back. Right, so as I showed before, just the normal lure gear, and then the slow jigs. Obviously the slow jigs have assist hooks rather than a treble on the bottom, you do get a much better hookup rate. And when you do hook fish, you don't actually tend to drop the fish because if you could imagine a single hook, will find its way better in the, in the fish's mouth rather than obviously basically three hooks being a treble. They tend to catch so quick where they can nick it in the lip and obviously pull the hooks in the fight. What I do find with the assist hooks is when the bites are quite hard to come by, I just basically get some ragworm and just Put a little bit of ragworm on the hooks, especially fish like the uh, the cuckoo wrasse and well, all the wrasse species really. I find you'll still get them on the slow jigs without bait on the hooks, but sometimes you tend to just sort of get a few more bites as you go in. So basically just like that. So you've got obviously the attractant of the lure and just a bit of bait on the hooks. So I'll do our cast this up now and See if we can get some fish on the camera. Basically, as I said before, there's a lot of tide out there and deep water, so just cast it out. I tend to let it sink on a tight line, just stem in the spool slightly, or with your index finger. So if you can imagine there's a lot of undertow under that surface, it's, if you leave it sink, sink on a complete slack line, it takes a lot more line out than what it would if you let it sink on a, a tighter line. And then when it hits bottom, when you do eventually feel it, there's so much slack out there, but by the time you catch up to it, the tide might have got your hook stuck in the rocks. So I tend to leave it slack, drop on a tight line. And you'll feel if you get hit on the, on the drop, because these slow jigs work on the drop, and you will have fish pick it up, dropping down. And the pollock will be up in the water if, they're, if what they're feeding on is up. So, right, that's down. And I basically just, oh, there's a fish straight away, look. There we go. There's a better fish. That feels like a good fish, that, whatever that is. It's got me stuck. Oh, he's got me stuck. He's come in. Now, yeah, there's a lot of ledges down here. So once you get the fish coming, it's very important to keep them, keep their heads up. This does feel like a decent fish, actually. Not sure what it is. I just said, it's probably a wrasse. But you never know. I got the camera going by there. If you can get it landing on film. Nice ras. Nice ballon. Put a bit of worm on the jig and I don't know. Well, I think I'm just gonna handball this up really. Well I lift it with the rod gently. 
It's a pull by there. Lovely colours on him. There we go. Like I said, putting the worm on the hooks, camping on the fish, just like so. It's a lovely ball in there. Probably pushing the two pound mark. Lovely orange one. Lovely colours on that tail. Didn't even move the lure, obviously hit as soon as it hit the bottom. So, that is beautiful fish. Amazing. And they do fight well. Oh, he's a lively one. So we'll get, get a quick photo of him now. And send him on his way. Right, so unfortunately I've had a few problems with my camera. So I'm going to have to go to the GoPro. Which isn't a problem. Right, so basically I'm going to have a go for the RAS. It's got a slightly heavier lure rod. This one casts up to 120 grams. Got that filled with 35 pound braid. Got a 25 pound mono leader. Down to three re swivel and then a short hook link of 25 pound fluoro and then onto a size one hook and then i've got a longer length then a slightly lighter mono i think it's about 18 pound and then if you knocked in it to weaken it and two ounce lead and then obviously bait ragworm for the ras I'm gonna try a circle hook as well, but I haven't got anything with me, any braid to make up a dongle, because I find at the minute the fish are further out. So you would need a bit of a, some sort of dongle on there to just elasticate the bait too for casting. But there we go. It's, and there's no need to fish two hooks, because a lot of the time with the wrasse, as soon as you get a bite and hook one, you need to get it in so it doesn't snag you up, because they, they do go straight for the bottom. So the more hooks on there, the more chance of snagging up. So just simple like that. Three root swivel, short hook link, weak link, down to a two ounce lead. All right, let's give it a go. Morgan and Chris are over there trying for the wrasse in that gully. And let's have a go off the front. All right, let's cast it out. Like I said, a lot of the bites seem to be further out. But typically, a lot of wrasse fishing is in close. I put a two ounce lead, obviously, to get it down a bit quicker and hold on the bottom. Because it's not like a lure where you're going to be balancing it along so much. Peel that down. It's quite deep down there. Yeah, that's the bottom. The bites off a rat te tend to be very aggressive. You know when you get a bite off one. There's a bite straight away, look. Just drag it a little bit. I've had quite a few like scorpion fish here in the past fishing like this so I just had a little small bite there so it might be something a bit different there's a better bite there that's a ras there we go look see that tip going over stop there we go fish on Like I said before, when you hook one, keep it coming. Don't particularly feel a big fish, but they're all amazing in their own way, with the colours and stuff. It's definitely a wrasse I'd say though. Yep, another ballon, I think. 
Here's another ballon ras. Pretty orangey like the other one I had, a bit smaller. Amazing fish though. Right, let's get him straight back. Let's go. Straight down. Let's try again. So the little tiny fish, I don't know what it is. It's a uh, oh, poor cod. Little poor cod. That's what those big pollock will be feeding on. Another species for the tally though. Well that tide's picked up quite a lot really. And it's not really the best for the wrasse when there's a lot of tide. I've been trying for the wrasse for the past half hour or so. I had a couple as you've seen. And I just had the nice pollock on the worm baits. Nice chunky pollock. Taking the worm bait intended for the wrasse. So what I'll do, I think, on the on the heavy rod that I got for the ras, I might put a bigger metal on, a jig or something, and try and you know hug the bottom a bit more with a heavier lure. Because those smaller jigs are just coming off the bottom too quick. So hopefully there might be some bigger pollock up there with that tide. So I'll try a bigger lure now. And fingers crossed we hook up into a better pollock. Right, let's get this thing sorted out. Well, the fish has been pretty tough the past hour or so that tide really picked up and it's just started easing off went back to the rask here now the lovely cuckoo rask nice male this time good colors on that that's a pb for me as well this weight is a pound dead on a pound so I'm buzzing with that one colors on him that's the male so obviously like i said before that, the the females are always pink. The males are obviously a lot colourful. The blue is in that tail. Alright, let's get him back. We've moved Mark again, which is actually the same mark we fish this morning. Had a small pollock straight away. Next cast, another nice wrasse. And the jig again. Wicked colours on this one. The tail on there. Amazing colours. Same with these wrasse, they're all different colours, you got all different patterns in them. Quite well, can't complain. Amazing fish. Beats being at home catching dogfish. Right, whoa, he's a lively one. I think he's ready to go back, so let's get him unhooked and send him on his way. Just fishing with the uh, jig. The full worm on each, you can see how lively they are. If you can imagine them when they're out there. Wriggling around as you bounce it on the bottom. I just had another nice wrasse then. Same as the last one you've seen. Fishing that method again. So it's, what's good as well, before you cast it out as far as you can, dip your worm in. Just freshen, freshen them up and they go a bit more lively. They toughen up a bit then, so don't snap in the cast. Let's see if we can get one on camera.
can go to the bike then. Yeah, there's a bike. There's a fish. I don't feel very big though. Got a pollock most probably. Yeah, a lot of pollock. Only a little one. You can see it does work well though. Just getting a bite now. There might be a rice. Aggressive. You see the rod tip going over. Yep, the rice. Balan, like the smallest one of the day by the looks of it. The dark one this time. That worm has really made a difference though. Struggling for bikes with just the lure and struggling for bikes with just plain ragworm, so just shows a little bit of change. Gets you the extra bites. Right, let's keep trying. Right, guys, that's pretty much all wrapped up for today. We we're gonna have a little bit more of a fish and then shoot off, but I mean, it's four o'clock now, get dark at five. We got all the gear to pack up. I got a couple of uh, fish down there, a couple of pollock I've kept, I'll fill it them quickly. And obviously by the time we climb up, we've got about half hour, walk back to the car, I'd say, maybe a bit less. But um, obviously don't want to be, I haven't got headlamps or anything with us, so the last thing I want to be caught out on the rocks in the dark. So yeah, it's been a pretty good day. Unfortunately, I mean, we fished this mark, we're, we're here now. Uh, well, first thing this morning, it's the first mark we fished fished well and then we obviously moved to the other mark around the cuckoo rass and then I was going to fish another mark back down this way the headland and basically it's a mark on the corner it's a big ledge you can fish off and I've had some nice pollock up to like just under seven pound there so I mean we were going to fish that we got down the basically climbed down and the ledge was just way too slippery from the rain we had last night and I got stud wellies on as myself which is a massive thing for down here I definitely recommend it Obviously, safety being number one. And Morgan and Chris haven't got any studs on, so we didn't bother risking it. Obviously, it's not worth it at the end of the day, just for a few fish. So we come back here, and it's been pretty good. I had a few rats, as you've seen. A few pollock. It's been pretty hard going the past, probably about a half hour to an hour. Been having a few more pollock and your little rats, but not, not much. But I'll, be, I'll definitely be back down um, through the summer months. Hopefully, trying to get some nice pollock and rats again. Um, I'll probably be back down soon for the taupe, I'd imagine. My mate Ollie, there's probably been another video I've done. He's never had his taupe before, so I'll try and get him up, see if he can catch his first taupe. So, yeah, I mean, there's only so much you can expect. February time, really. I just thought to get out for the day somewhere different. It's been worth a drive, I think. It's been pretty good fishing. Some other species. And Morgan had that macro as well, which is another species for the tally. 
But basically the area we're fishing, something I didn't actually mention before, was basically we parked at White Sands on Sir Damon's Head. And then obviously you park in the, in the big car park on the sandy beach. And then you take, you walk right from the beach and you go up and over the head back, you go up and over the hill back right down. And then you go up and over the main head and you literally just poke down in any of these little cracks in the cliffs and any, anywhere you can climb down and it's all pretty good fishing. So, um, yeah, what I'll do probably in the summer, I'll probably come down for four weekends. I might do a bit of filming of the area as well as the fishing. Cause that always helps with these areas is knowing where to go. Cause there's plenty of marks down here that you don't really seem, you're right out the tide. So you set back in the, in the cliff, or in the rocks really. And you don't really get any tide. So it's, uh, don't really catch only pollock and wrasses. Bit of tide obviously works better. It helps a lot of fishing. So, yeah, I'll do that in the summer. Obviously, I'll show you guys a bit more where to go and a few of the marks I know of. So yeah, until then, I think that's us done for today. So like I said, I'll have a, probably another fish about 10, 15 minutes and shoot off. I might do a bit of film and walk back to the car, see how I feel because it's a bit of a climb back up. So uh, I might be out of breath and wanted to just lie there and fall asleep. So, right. I think that is us then. So until next time, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.